The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Perez. You're listening to the Better Live the Dead podcast. And with that, we welcome you to Better Live Than Dead, episode 146, the NFL Week 2 cast, powered by Better Live Than Dead and the Gear Radio Network. I am Ryan Wolf at Wolf BLTD, joined on the IndyCard Media Hotline, making his return to the podcast, first time, long time, Chris Downey, at CJ Downey on Twitter. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you doing today, Ryan? Good, man. Glad to have you on a podcast. Glad to be talking some football, talking everything football, top down. So much stuff happened last week, and honestly, we're not even going to spend a ton of time talking about the games. We're going to talk about everything that happened because of the games or happened in the games themselves. But first, Chris, before we get started, you got to let the people know you can hear us on better live than dead.com, Apple podcasts, Google play music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast, you can get this podcast. If not, you know how to get a hold of John. He'll be more than happy to do some work and fix that for you. Now week two of the national football league in the books and star quarterbacks are dropping like flies. Chris, that brings us to our first of the three big things this week. League-wide injuries change the landscape of the league. First off, Carolina quarterback, Carolina Panthers quarterback, Cam Newton, re-aggravated his foot injury, his midfoot sprain, last Thursday versus Tampa Bay. Quote, we'll see how it goes when asked about Newton's status. Uh, as of this evening, that would be Wednesday evening, the 18th of September. Um, Ian Rappaport is reporting that that he was told by someone in the team if Newton doesn't practice on Wednesday, it's probably not going to happen. Excuse me, he's probably not going to play on Sunday. He did not practice today. So it's definitely looking like Kyle Allen will start. Now, Chris, we've seen Cam Newton struggle kind of out of the gate, not sure if he's 100%, either if it's his foot that's causing the problems or if it was his uh, surgically repaired shoulder. But Cam Newton hasn't looked like the Cam Newton that we've come to know and enjoy. No, he's not. And uh, the big stat that stuck out is, I mean, he's lost his last eight starts and, you know, watching, obviously you can pick out the bad throws, but I mean, watching what happened last Thursday, he was not the Cam Newton that we're used to seeing for the past eight seasons. And uh, I think this is something that needs to heal. If not, he's going to hurt himself even more and being a mobile quarterback, you need your feet. Um, the The other thing too is he hasn't been running the ball at all. No. And I, th- I think this is partly why, and I think they tried to sweep this under the rug and tried to hope it would heal on its own while playing. And I think it's kind of biting them, biting them where they uh, least wanted it to hit. And I think they'll have to turn to Kyle Allen on Sunday, unfortunately for uh, Carolina, or maybe fortunately, and maybe he'll be a breath of fresh air for that team. Who knows? I mean, looking at the throws that Cam Newton has been attempting to make, it you know you saw on, on Thursday where he can't get his feet set under him. And he's, he's losing velocity, so he's throwing the ball into the ground, you know, three, four yards in front of his receivers. And that's been an ongoing thing that's only progressively gotten worse. And as, as mentioned, he, he's not running the ball. So you take that dimension away from him. You make him – essentially, you take a three-dimensional guy and make him one-dimensional. Uh, it's, not, it's not great for Carolina. So even if Newton isn't – even if they were going to have him play, it probably makes sense to just let him heal – let Kyle Allen start. They're 0-2 in a division that's now, I wouldn't say completely wide open, but we'll talk about it here in a little bit. But there's a chance for Carolina, despite being 0-2, to come back into this division. So it definitely makes sense just to start the healthy quarterback, maybe a step, excuse me, he may be a step down from Cam Newton's talent level, but a uh, a healthy a healthy backup is probably better than what Cam Newton has been injured at this point in time. Absolutely. And someone that, you know, was with the team, obviously, this season. Um, I don't know much about Kyle Allen, but uh, looking up here now, he was undrafted free agent and getting a start over Will Greer, I guess. uh, That shows how ready he is in comparison. And, you know, you want your best guy out there no matter uh, what the circumstance is. And if Cam Newton's hurt and you need need Kyle Allen out there as opposed to Will Greer, then so be it. Let Cam get healthy. And like you said – NFC South is still pretty wide open through two weeks, even though the Panthers are 0-2. So we'll see what happens. 
Looking over now to uh, New Jersey, to the Meadowlands, they have had a quarterback controversy, not because of good play, because of injuries. First off, they lose Sam Darnold uh, out indefinitely with mononucleosis. They're saying he's going to try to play week five. But as we all know from high school, that uh, that really takes a while to come back and really can affect you uh, in, in multiple different ways. Also, Sam Darnold's backup, Trevor Semyon, tore ligaments in his ankle. Monday night against the Cleveland Browns. So he's out for the season because he'll he'll likely need surgery, or he's going to need surgery. I apologize to repair that issue. Luke Falk, if you don't know who that is, I'll let you know. He's Tennessee's 2018 six-round pick. He'll be starting Sunday against the New England Patriots, and uh, the, the, the odds makers have the Patriots, I think it's plus 22 or plus 20 or something crazy like that. <laughs> It's it's definitely going to be an experience. It'll be a game that we will all have happen, had happened in our lives. But the New York Jets, Chris, they cannot catch a break under center. Absolutely not, no. And, I mean, going to your third quarterback is nothing you want to want to be doing, especially uh, week three of the NFL season. Then coming up, you said they play the Patriots, correct? I believe yeah, so. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's not an ideal matchup considering what New England has done the first two weeks and what they did to Miami last week. So, um I, I don't see this looking good in any any sense. Um, and I just pulled it up. And the Jets signed David Fails, David Falls. Uh, Falk and Fails. They've got quite Fales. the. So there is their backup because obviously with third string, you don't want to have your punter going under center if someone gets hurt. Um, but I, I don't. This isn't paying off for anybody on the New York Jets. This is I not going to be. The stat. Yeah, I can't remember the stat, but I think they're the first NFL team in multiple years in decades to start three different quarterbacks the first three weeks of the season. No, I've I've not heard of this happening. You hear of quarterback changes due to poor performance, but nothing nothing of this stature that has caused uh, a guy that probably thought he wasn't even going to be dressing to now be under center for an NFL team going against arguably a very strong New England Patriots team that's coming in with a massive – Scoring differential just two weeks in. I'm looking right now to see if I can find the stat, but I don't know if I uh, if I'm able to here. That that's okay. Um, <laughs> you mentioned <laughs> just looking at this article. One of the names they mentioned the Jets could could have signed was Brock Osweiler. If you want to know how things are going for you, week three, you're talking about. Oh well, we can always sign Brock Osweiler. That's that season is going in the wrong. Records. I mean, there is a, another now, quarterback out there, though. But we're, I guess, we'll, we'll stray yeah, away from no, that. For now. Yeah, no one will, no one will sign him because uh, he's bad at football, right, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, making the I Super would sign Bowl him if bad it were me. I would. Well, yeah. Well, we're sitting at home, looking at Pittsburgh, talking about football. So we're talking about Pittsburgh. We're talking yeah. about Ben Roethlisberger. Absolutely. He'll under he'll undergo elbow surgery, not Tommy John surgery. They, they made that very specific. It's not Tommy John; it's elbow surgery. Um, they're playing it very close to the vest for some reason, and and trying to not talk about exactly what the problem is or, or what happened. They said, you know, Mike Tomlin says we'll talk about it after he gets surgery done. But either way, he's out for the season. Bud Roethlisberger said that he'll be back next season after suffering the season-ending elbow injury last Sunday against the Seattle Seahawks. Mason Rudolph, the Pittsburgh Steelers, 2018 third round pick, will start in Roethlisberger's absence. Uh, Chris, I mean, it's it's crazy to look at this and, and and see, you know, year and a half ago, two years ago, the Steelers had what appeared to be, excuse me, all the parts to the to the machine of you know they had Ben Roethlisberger, they had Le'Veon Bell, they had Antonio Brown. Now they don't have any any of the three, and it's and they just traded their first round pick next year for Minka Fitzpatrick for some reason. So you're looking at it now and you wonder to yourself, um, they're, they're once considered the favorites in the, in the AFC North or the AFC North, the AFC, uh, no, you're right. AFC North, AFC North. I don't know why I didn't think about, I, I had a brain fart there. The AFC North. Thank you, Chris. No. They were once the favorites. Now they'll be lucky if they finish above 500. It seems like, uh, well, I mean, you did mention Le'Veon Bell and, and uh, Antonio Brown, but I think those two have been easily replaced with uh, Juju and James. Uh, I wouldn't say talent level, but efficiency level. Um, you know, you, you have to feel for Pittsburgh. They trade away uh, Josh Dobbs when 
uh, another team came calling for uh, who the heck did they trade him to? I forgot. They traded Josh Dobbs, and the week later, you know, Ben gets hurt, and now it's Mason Rudolph, former uh, Okie State quarterback. And uh, I think Josh Dobbs. Josh Dobbs went to the um, the Jaguars. It was it Jags? Okay. Um, I couldn't remember if it was the Jaguars or Dolphins. Um, I knew it was down in Florida, though. But then they traded the first round to get Mika Fitzpatrick, which seems very counterintuitive, counterproductive for what you're trying to do. Um, but maybe they inquired about the wrong Fitzpatrick. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, so they traded that away. So you definitely know they're not going after, uh, they're not going to try and tank the season to get uh, Tua from Alabama. Um, Cause I mean, there's definitely a lot of star quarterbacks coming out from college this year that can make an impact pretty quickly. And I guess, uh, I mean, who knows? I mean, it was a non-contact injury and we all know how those go with the knee. So, I mean, the elbow is essentially the, the upper knee in terms of how it's laid out. So I, I don't see this looking good for big Ben. And even if he does come back, who knows what kind of, production he'll be able to garner next year coming back from a injury to your throwing arm so yeah absolutely hit at, at his age with with the the amount of wear and tear on his body it won't shut the hell up over here you're ruining my podcast dog anyways ben roethlisberger's got a lot of mileage on his body a lot of wear and tear um I know he's under contract. I mean, if he weren't under contract, maybe this would be the last we saw Ben Roethlisberger. But we know players don't like going out like this. But I mean, Pittsburgh's in trouble. Don't don't get me wrong. I mean, James Conner is is good, but he he's not a hundred percent right now from what we are gathering. Says he doesn't have ligament damage in his knee, but he has been hurt uh, this season. Uh, and then Juju Smith Schuster is playing well, but it seems like without Antonio Brown flanking, he's he's good now last year level. Maybe it'll take some time and also obviously with Ben Roethlisberger being hurt, that'll, that'll certainly play into it as well. But again, at this point in time, um, things aren't looking good for Pittsburgh. And honestly, speaking of, Chris, not looking good, we've got one more big name to talk about today. New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees. He is out roughly six weeks after reportedly undergoing thumb surgery in Los Angeles to repair a torn UCL uh, in his thumb on his throwing hand. Teddy Bridgewater expected to get the first crack at starting in Drew Brees' absence. I think this one for me, Chris, is the biggest, uh, biggest, I guess, disappointment of them all because the Saints are still are as good as they were last year. I mean, okay. Brees is a year older. He's got a lot of a lot of tread worn off the tires, as as we mentioned with Ben Roethlisberger. But they had a good enough team where they could probably make another run. And now at this point you got to hope that they can make the playoffs and that when Drew Brees comes back, he can get back into the swing of things relatively quickly and put the team on his back to, to try to, to bring them back to the NFC Championship game and possibly further. But this was a big blow for a team that was built to win now. Absolutely. And, I mean, they, similar to Pittsburgh, they have the key, you know, the big running back, the big receiver there. And, you know, you have the arguably the Hall of Fame quarterback that could lead them, lead them to the promised land. Now you got to – a backup that is pretty good. I guess Teddy Bridgewater would take Teddy over Mason, but I think uh, I think the Saints are in a little bit of trouble. But I mean, you go 500 through that stretch. Um, I think you're sitting fine in the NFC South. Um, Tampa Bay, Jameis Winston won't do anything special. I don't think this year. Um, Carolina again, they're having quarterback issues, and then who am I forgetting? Tampa, Carolina, New Orleans, Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay, so Atlanta with their machine going on down there. I mean, that may be the only one to contend with. And even then, if you're a couple games out, you know, the NFL likes to stack division games at the end of the year. So you steal one if you're New Orleans, and then you're right back in it. Um, so I think I think having Drew Brees come back in six weeks is, is beneficial. Um, obviously, you don't want to rush him back, but also, you know, you got time going into – week nine, week 10, that you're getting your Hall of Fame quarterback back to 100% and ready to make a push at a wild card, if not division title, depending on how uh, the schedule shakes out over those two months. 
the and we're going to talk some standings later in the podcast because if there's nothing we love to do more here at the Better Live of the Dead podcast, it's to overreact when we have little information. Uh, but when when you talk about the NFC South, if Atlanta doesn't run away with it, because right now they they really should be the favorites in the in that division. If they don't run away with it, this would have the NFC South just beating up on each other and then you know a team like the saints could could get hot and sneak in or you know carolina could get hot and sneak in and steal the division so if atlanta doesn't take off uh we could see something like that but a lot of football left to be played it's only heading into week three of 17 so there's a lot a lot of football left to go absolutely but the cool part chris the cool part about it all bringing us to our second of three big things this week in the national football league never stop we've got two hot topics of the week nothing to do with the games everything to do with two players jacksonville jaguars uh cornerback i almost said center back like it's what is this soccer hey. jacksonville jaguars cornerback jalen ramsey requested trade reportedly after getting into a heated argument with coach doug marone last sunday uh Ramsey told media members, quote, I wanted to talk as soon as I could today just because I really don't want to be a distraction for my teammates getting ready for a game on Thursday. Right now, keyword right now, I'm still a part of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm happy about that, and I'm getting ready for the game as well. as That is where my focus is right now. Heading into the season, uh, 2019 season, Pro Football Focus rated Ramsey as the number two corner in all of football behind it, New England's Stephon Gilmore. Now, Chris, Jacksonville reportedly asking for two first-round picks have reportedly received trade offers that include quote a t- first in 2020 and a fifth in 2021 from an NFC team or from an from a NFC team and a first in 2020 and a player from an AFC team that is per at Diana ESPN on Twitter. Chris, would you be making a deal for Jalen Ramsey if you were a team looking to, I guess, improve your defense? Are you ready to you know? Hey, we're one player away from this defense being an elite defense, whatever it may be. Would you be making the call to pick up Jalen Ramsey, or do you think not only is the the baggage on the field, but the contract that is coming off the field too much uh, to pay for for Jalen Ramsey? I think it depends on uh, the situation that you would put him in. Um, obviously, we know Doug Marone from the, his days in Buffalo and what type what type of Doge coach he is Marone, what kind of uh, ship he runs there, and obviously Jalen Ramsey has the antics, and you know you want that kind of personality and. Uh, that drive to be the best and stay at the best. So I think he'd be good for a team that, like you said, is one step away. But as we've seen in the past seven years or so, um, cornerbacks especially are very much a two season, maybe three season wonder. And then the next big cornerback comes along. Um, I mean, there's Darrell Revis for a few seasons. And then uh, the guy that Carolina had, that they dealt to Washington. I forgot his name, Josh Norman. Um, he was good for Carolina for a season or two, then good with Washington. And I'm sure he's just another name now. And then Jalen Ramsey comes up. And then in a couple of years, you're going to have the next guy. So I think he'll be good to add to a lot of teams' defense. It's just who's willing to pay that price. Um, and now that I always have this belief that now that you know a guy wants out, his price drops X amount. Um, a team's not going to get what they want for him because you know he's going to want out. So yeah, the more vocal, leverage, you're in trouble. Exactly, and the more that that player becomes vocal, you don't want that distraction. So that price will drop for that athlete. And I think with the persona that Ramsey brings, not only on the field but off the field, I think that's only going to pick up and be even more prominent as the weeks go on. And I mean, I just read something on Twitter that he probably won't be dealt before tomorrow the Thursday night game, but I mean, there's 10 days in between phone calls will be happening. I'm sure I wouldn't be shocked by week four or five. If he's, uh, if he's not in Jacksonville colors by, by that time. One of the things that I saw uh, on Twitter that I really did enjoy was someone had said, isn't it funny how all this, uh, how all the cover corners talk junk in the national football league, because they've got, a, they've got a lot of breath left because they're not really doing much work. It was <laughs> tough on Twitter, but that was really good. Um, I think Jalen Ramsey, I mean, when, when the Jaguars made that run to the AFC championship game, he, he defined the swagger on that defense. He was the vocal point. He was the star of that defense. He still is a very good, Good plunk, but I find it 
very to to pay two first round picks for him on top of the fact that you're going to have to dump a ton of cash into him long term. And I think he's I mean I think he's a great quarterback, don't get me wrong, but I also think he probably needs the right system to play in. And I think a lot of the problem right now is that it's like what we saw with Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka Fitzpatrick wasn't happy in 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 Miami because he's he's a talented player, but the system they had him playing in was was not playing to his strengths. And we've always talked about on the podcast you to 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 have a successful team to get the most of your players, you have to try to, to maximize their strengths, minimize their weaknesses. It's coaching 101. So I could I could see why if you know you gotta have the right fit for Jalen Ramsey, because you can go out and get him, and just because you have a big name does not mean that excuse me, that he's gonna make your defense better. If he fits the role you're gonna put him in, that would be perfect. And I think he would excuse me. I think he would be great in in, in another team's defense as long as he's the right fit. And he, where he just got to make sure he fits. And I think we need a strong locker room, which is why people jokingly mention the Patriots. But I mean, you look at New England and you're like, hey, you know, you need a, I don't think New England's going to trade for him, but I'm saying you need a locker room like that where there's a cohesive unit. There's, they have their, they have their top down all set so that way he can go in and, and, and fit in and just kind of lay low and do his thing and not have to worry about, trash talking and all that stuff. You can just let the play do the talking. And I think that'd be the best bet for Jalen Ramsey moving forward. Absolutely. And uh, I just looked up something now, and I guess earlier today, the Chiefs, Seahawks, and Eagles were a couple teams linked to Jalen Ramsey. Obviously, that's not uh, firm or anything, but, I mean, it did come from uh, Well, I mean, I mean, the, Mr. Lock and Bora. Look at, look at, look at. I can confirm. I will confirm on the podcast that the Chiefs are interested in in acquiring Jalen Ramsey. And I can tell you how I know this. Go look at all the Chiefs players on Twitter trying to recruit Jalen Ramsey to the Kansas City Chiefs. It is great. The the NFL is like the baby NBA. Now, the NBA has got it figured out. Chris, you and I both know this. The NBA does a great job of, of trying to be as fan-friendly as possible. Uh, but the NFL is starting to heat up where, you know, players will openly talk about, oh, I'd love to have so-and-so on my team, whatever. Is it is it tampering? Absolutely. Uh, but do we care? Not really, because it's fun. This is a Absolutely. lot of fun. It's fun. It's fun to go on Twitter and see them, see these players say, "Man, I'd love to have Jalen Ramsey on my team." Like that's awesome to me. Absolutely, and you know, it it doesn't make it seem like it's uh, it's so much uh, a tight environment where these old men are controlling the team. These players are using these platforms to have a voice, and you know, they all know each other. I mean, we know this. Like they've probably played in college or played against each other in the same conference or played sevens in high school summer. Um, these guys know each other. So you know that it's, it's not just being done to, to be done. Like they know each other, they know what they're doing. And um, I will say this, I hope Ramsey goes to the NFC. Um, don't have to worry about him in the wild card game this year for Buffalo, but that's a, a biasness that I have. So send him to the NFC. We won't have to see him to the Super Bowl this year. Go bills. I agree with you on that one. Hold on one second. I'm getting a phone call here. One second. I agree with you, Chris, by the way. I'm back now. That was a that was a quick break. It's cool because in podcast land, you know what's going to happen? You just cut okay. out the audio. Bang, bang. And it's going to be, I'm going to say, give me a second. I'm back. Crazy how that works out. Uh, I'm, actually watching, I'm actually watching NXT right now, which is kind of cool because thank, thank uh, I know this is a football podcast right now, but thanks to Chris Jericho and AEW for making WWE mad enough to put NXT on television. But anyways, I agree with you. I think Jalen Ramsey would be fun in Kansas City, but get him over to the NFC, get him out of here. That'd be fine. Um, The next guy we want to talk about, Chris, Giants, New York Giants quarterback. I almost said superstar, and I would have had to laugh myself out of the podcast. New York Giants quarterback Eli Manning benched after the loss on Sunday versus the Buffalo Bills. Quarterback, rookie quarterback, Daniel Jones will start his first NFL start. Uh, he will, I, I, will he start? Can he start his first game? He's already played. He'll start his first NFL game. First okay. regular season game. I just, it's, I don't, yeah. First, his first regular season start, Daniel Jones, quarterback from Duke. Uh, he is going to start Sunday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I love sometimes, you know, I talk so much in and on and off the air that, um, Sometimes I just forget how to do it. It's like, you know, it just kind of melts down a little. 
So, Chris, Eli Manning, follow me on these numbers here. Eli Manning, 116 and 116 in his NFL career, 56,537 passing yards, 362 touchdowns, 241 interceptions. He has two Super Bowl victories, both against uh, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady. And now, Chris, of quarterbacks who have won two Super Bowls, that would be 12 quarterbacks who have done that, seven quarterbacks are Hall of Famers. You've got uh, Tom Brady, who's active, Jim Plunkett, Eli Manning, as mentioned, still active, and Peyton Manning, who is not yet eligible, are all on the outside looking in. So we've got, if we say 7 of 12, 8 of 12, 9 of 12 uh, players who have won two Super Bowls are let me see here. Two quarterbacks. One, yeah. So question for you is, is Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? Despite the fact that, I mean, in a, in a, cause the thing is my, my thought is, is he a Hall of Famer or a Hall of really gooder? You know, I think, uh, people will get caught up, uh, in the, in that last name, the name on the back of his Jersey. Um, I think, uh, Peyton Manning really much, really much. Wow. Um, we're really having a, a great time here on, on, on the podcast with words. He, uh, he, he set that up well. And, you know, I think people, like I say, you know, he's a Manning. Um, but I, I, I don't see him being a Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, maybe down the line when they need the older guy to go in, he'll get the, he'll get the nod, but I definitely don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Fame or not a second ballot. Um, you know, he'll be on there for a while. Um, because I mean, he did win two Super Bowls. He did throw for a lot of yards and throw for a lot of touchdowns, but he's also a 500 quarterback. And I don't know many 500 quarterbacks that can start for 14 years, 15 seasons. Like that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, now granted he had his glory years are well behind him, but I mean, his, his numbers are, like you said, average, like there's nothing nothing that makes makes it stand out and makes him say, yeah, this guy is definitely a quarterback. And looking at, I mean, the thing is too, is that he came in an incredible, an incredible draft class. Uh, one thing I failed to mention too, Ben Roethlisberger is the other quarterback who I failed to mention who has won two Super Bowls. So of, of, uh, of the, of the 12 who have won seven Hall of Famers, so it would be eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, that would make sense then. So Brady, Plunkett, Manning, Manning, and Roethlisberger are not in. So end of the day, we're going to have probably 11 of 12. Because again, do I think Eli Manning's going to go in? He's got the Manning name. He's won two Super Bowls. Probably. But that's going to be one where you're going to say it, it may take a couple of years, first off, but he'll end up being a Hall of Very Good. Uh, I mean, granted, he has – Ben Roethlisberger has 56,545 passing yards in his career, which is crazy because he has – what is that? Uh, eight more passing yards than Eli Manning does. That's pretty wild. But – and he's also thrown one more touchdown. That's wild how, how close their numbers are. So the, how, I, this is something I just – talking about them. This is – yeah, this is something I just realized here. Is that uh, that Big Ben is fifty six thousand five hundred forty five yards, three hundred sixty three touchdowns, one hundred ninety one interceptions, and Eli Manning is three sixty two two forty one, and then fifty six five thirty seven. But when you look at Ben Roethlisberger, I mean Eli Manning is eight and twenty five in his last three seasons. Mm-hmm. Where you've got you've got uh, Big Ben is one forty four seventy one and one in his career, so that that'll probably help out for sure. But Excuse me. Nothing about Eli Manning jumps off the page. I mean, they won a Super Bowl because you figure you had uh, you had one one year they had an incredible defense, one of the best defenses ever, and then another year they they have uh, an insane catch. I believe that's right because they didn't have the great defense the same year they had the catch. If so, I'm wrong. Whatever, who cares? But either way, very talented teams. Eli Manning did what Eli Manning needed to do to make sure they won the Super Bowl. So I'm, if nothing else, very intrigued when that conversation comes up. Absolutely. And uh, as you were speaking, getting we were getting ready for this, I found a nice little article from uh, 538 where it's headlined, Eli Manning was an all-time average quarterback. And one of the things they um, list here is their advanced passing index 
and he is one of the most average quarterbacks ever, it says. <laughs> and his adjusted net yards per attempt is 101. It, it, that's the number, 101, where 100 is the average. That is 91st on the list of 100 quarterbacks. And the closest quarterback that is active is Derek Carr, four spots down. <laughs> um, above him are the likes of Brian Greasy, Jeff George, um, David Garrard, active for Cincinnati, Andy Dalton. Um, and below him are guys like Randall Cunningham, Gus Farratt, and Matt Hasselbeck. Um, Yikes. And just to put it in perspective, Steve Young is tops of that list at 123. And Joe Montana is at 121. And I'm then his looking, brother looking Peyton at is it. at three. He's, I'm sorry, what was that? Peyton Manning is third overall on that list. Okay. Yeah, that's that would make a lot of sense, yeah. So, I mean, looking at it, I, I, I get that the numbers are, are mediocre. But I think for me, it's it's the, the passing yards are there. The touchdowns are there. I think it's the win-loss record for me that really kind of – you're just like, you know, what about you made you a great player? What What about you – Set you apart. I think Ben Roethlisberger is a Hall of Famer. I think Philip Rivers is a Super Bowl victory away from being a lock, but I think Phil Rivers is 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 pretty pretty damn close. I mean that that quarterback class of Roethlisberger, Manning, and uh, and Phil Rivers will probably go down as one of the best we've seen in a long time because they they all should all three of them probably should be Hall of Famers. But again, if it wasn't for the two Super Bowl victories, I don't know where Eli Manning would stand in the in the uh in the in the conversation of being a Hall of Famer because he would go, "Okay, well yeah, him and Ben Roethlisberger have close to the same stats, but Roethlisberger has two titles." So exactly. I think that's what really pushes him into that into that conversation from <laughs> Hall of Very Good to Hall of Fame. Although I may not agree, but that's just where I think it's going to end up. But and um, you mentioned uh, Rivers and Big Ben. We'll just add those to the list here. Rivers is number seventeen on this list, and Big Ben is number twenty-two. Um, so I think there's a wide gap of seventy quarterbacks in between, uh, such as Mark Brunel and Doug Flutie right. and Phil Sims and Mark Bolger. That are uh, those are just a few of the names in between and in between rivers and big Ben, you get a guy by the name of Fran Tarkenton. So, and he was pretty good at the football. He was very good at football. Now, Chris, last thing, last of the three big things this week, I'm struggling tonight with, with just with words. I don't know what it is. It's gotta be because it's midweek. I ate a really delicious garbage plate tonight. It's gotta be the carbs going to my brain or something. Something's happening because I'm struggling, but Record paces through two weeks, Chris. We've got two players who are on a record pace. Judging by the title, can you believe that I was going to go that route? First off, Minnesota running back Dalvin Cook. He has 265 rushing yards through two games. He's on pace for an NFL record, 2,120 rushing yards. Eric Dickerson back in 1984 had 2,105. Now, I mean, it's quite a pace Dalvin Cook would have to keep up to break that record. But, Chris, my question here for you is, do you think Dalvin Cook can keep this pace up and rush for over 2,000 yards this season? No. Um, I And that's nothing against his ability. But, I mean, you'll get those games where they're playing other NFC North opponents on the road, such as Green Bay and Chicago, where, you know, those are tough places to play. And, sure, those teams may not be as good or – you may be having a great season. There's still divisional games and divisional games always have that weird juju where, you know, something just does not go right. Um, and I think you'll get a couple of those for him. Um, and who knows, Minnesota may have locked up the North. They may have locked up a playoff spot with a couple games left. So he may not play as much. Um, and and that may hinder his, his production just by cons- conservation for the playoffs. Um, but I mean, like you said, he has big numbers going into week three against Oakland and on only 41 attempts to have over 250 yards rushing. That is very much a, a positive thing for a guy who is looking to knock on wood, have a full healthy season in the NFL because his first two game, first two seasons, he hasn't even played a full season. Um, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully he can, hopefully he can bounce back. I mean, he needs to play a full season to get there, obviously. And, you know, he's definitely shown through the first two games why he was a a very highly touted running back coming out of Florida State. He also is an incredible talent and, and it's it's great. It's it's I believe the NFL is better. I mean, it goes without saying, but the NFL very much is better off with him healthy. 
and, and running all over the NFC North than not. Absolutely. And I mean, he replaces Adrian Peterson, who um, moved on with his career a few years back. And I think uh, I think Vikings fans will be pleased that Delvin Cook is showing showing signs of what he can really do. Um, Cause I mean, we saw it in college. I don't know how much you watched ACC football or paid attention, but Delvin cook is very, a very strong running back. And I mean, 265 yards through two games is uh, no easy feat for, for a NFL running back. So. Absolutely. I want to look at Kansas city chiefs quarterback, future hall of fame quarterback. Actually, it's 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 future Hall of Famer Patrick Mahomes. That's how I'm supposed to to address him on the podcast. So Kansas City Chiefs future Hall of Fame quarterback Patrick Mahomes, 821 passing yards through two games. Chris, he's on pace for 6,568 passing yards this season. To put that into perspective, that's a thousand more yards than the NFL record. The current NFL record is 5,000. 477 yards by Peyton Manning in 2013. That crazy year he had with the Denver Broncos. Chris, could we see the first 6,000 plus passing yard season from Mahomes this year? Or do you think that, uh, that, that the wonder kind might come back to earth uh, in a couple weeks here? You know, I, th- I think similar to uh, Delvin Cook, I think Patrick Mahomes will have his game or games where he hits a slump. And uh, that's nothing against him. I mean, he, everything has ebbs and flows. But I also think uh, the way the offense is built around him, it's very similar to uh, that Big 12 style where it's, you know, a lot of scoring, a lot of plays. You're not spending much time uh, running one or two yards. Like, you're you're throwing the ball. I mean, I'm looking at his numbers now. And through two games, he has 77 throws. That's a freaking high number through two weeks. His arm is going to fall off at that rate. Hey, you know what? He has two of them. I'm sure he can throw with his other arm as well. <laughs> um, and I mean, you know, maybe he'll hit a game where he doesn't have the best performance. And he did both of this on he did both of these performances on the road. I just noticed that. So he gets back to the friendly confines of Arrowhead. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, but yeah, I th- I think he'll get close, but I also don't think he'll hit that mark because again, if Kansas City runs away with their division. Who knows? You may not need him for that that December 29th game at home against the Chargers, or even some of that game the week before in Chicago. You know, who knows where the standings shake out, and they may give him a little bit of a rest because I mean, you don't want your uh, you don't want your star quarterback getting hurt before the playoffs, especially if you want to want to make that Super Bowl push. Well, absolutely. And, and looking at my cat is losing her mind. She just saw a moth in the window. Damn near, she damn near jumped out into the front lawn. Uh, looking at Patrick Mahomes, I mean, it's crazy going into this season. A lot of people thought, you know, hey, there's uh, there's there's really nowhere for Patrick Mahomes to go but down because he had an incredible year last year. Going to be very difficult and almost impossible to, to replicate. And this year through two weeks, he's actually been better and he's on pace for – uh, better stats than he was last year. So we'll have to see. We'll keep an eye on Patrick Mahomes because he is by far one of the most exciting players in football. Um, so so we'll set, definitely keep an eye on these paces, and we'll we'll update you all as, as we see fit. Now, looking ahead, Chris, as mentioned, we love to be obtuse on the podcast, as you know. Because we're we both acute to- already, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We like to we like to look ahead and hey, two weeks, two weeks into the playoff into the in the NFL season, we're talking playoffs. Playoffs never too exactly. Never too early to look into the playoff picture. Now looking at this right now, uh just going through the divisions, New England and Buffalo both tied at two and zero in the AFC East. Excuse me, the AFC North, Baltimore leads at two and zero. Uh, you've got the AFC South. You've got a three-way tie. Indianapolis, Houston, and Tennessee tied one, uh, one and one. Kansas City leads the AFC West, two and zero record. NFC East, you got Dallas at a very convincing two and zero. Green Bay also very convincing two and zero. The NFC North, the NFC South, wide open. Tampa, Atlanta, New Orleans tied one and one. And the NFC West, you've got a slobber knocker out there. You've got. Uh, the Rams, San Francisco, and Seattle all at 2-0. and Right now, the wild cards in the AFC, you've got Buffalo and Houston. And the wild cards in the NFC, you've got the Rams and Philadelphia. Now, Chris, teams that are in trouble, we've talked about a couple of these teams here. 
Essentially, these are teams that were expected to be okay, and they are now struggling. You've got the Jets, the Steelers, the Jaguars, the Broncos, the Saints, and the Panthers all uh, kind of looking to be a little bit in trouble through two weeks. I mean, whether it's injury, whether it's ineffectiveness, or both. Um, I think my cat got into some catnip because she's acting like a, a, a wacko over here. But those teams in trouble and and looking like they're going to need a lot of help to to get back to the playoffs if they want to get to the playoffs. Um, they're they're definitely going to need something to break their way. So, Chris, what are your what are your thoughts on the standings so far through two weeks? You know, I think it's uh, you know we love looking at ahead. Uh, let, let's take a look here. I think New England, obviously, I don't, I don't see anything slowing that train down. Unfortunately, um, they're they're they reload every year. They find new weapons. Um, they got Antonio Brown. Like, how how is that fair? Who knows? But I mean, you're giving 21 year old Tom Brady another weapon to throw in his 45th season in the league. Um, <laughs> Baltimore. Uh, I mean, Lamar Jackson's a beast. You know, that's going to definitely be a fun race to watch with uh, Cleveland as well. Um, I think Cleveland got off to a slow start, but I think they, they had a, a good showing Monday night. And uh, Yeah, it was the Jets, but, I mean, you still got to beat the teams you need to beat. And uh, they did that pretty well. And I think AFC North will be pretty good. Indianapolis, Houston, Tennessee, that'll be a toss-up. Um, I don't know how well India will hold on with Jacoby Brissett, though. Um, that's definitely going to be a question mark for them. Tennessee and Houston both have their their mobile quarterbacks. And then I think we can all assume Kansas City is going to run away with the West, Dallas with the East, and uh, Green Bay. Um, I think they I think they'll handle the North, barring uh, what happens out there. That's always a fun division to watch, no matter how good or bad they are. Um, but of all the teams that you mentioned that are in trouble, how many of them have quarterback injuries? Absolutely. Um, the Jets, like, like they always say, like they always say, show me a good, exactly. a good quarterback. I'll show you a good coach or vice versa. Exactly. And, you know, Joe Flacco, maybe still trying to find his bearings in Denver. Um, Joe Flacco is not a good quarterback. I think yeah. that Denver has confirmed that one. Hey, you know what? He's been to the Super Bowl. He's he won, won a Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. He was elite right. for one point in time of his life. He was elite. He is an elite quarterback. Um, and then Jacksonville is always a, a dumpster fire. And then, Four of those six well, think, teams are missing quarterback. So I think Jacksonville would have been in it if they if uh, Nick Foles wasn't spiked into the ground. Um, That's true. Same with the Jets. I think the Jets would have been better if Donald was okay. I mean, yeah, like you said, quarter. Let's see, the Jets quarterback, Pittsburgh quarterback, Jacksonville quarterback, Denver Joe Flacco quarterback, the Saints quarterback, Panthers quarterback. So again, any team too that thought they might not have a shot can definitely kind of push all their chips to the center of the table. I mean, like you said, Baltimore has been great with Lamar Jackson. He'll come back to earth at some point in time. Cleveland's offense has looked sluggish. Uh, they're definitely not clicking at this point in time. Uh, Freddie Kitchens, as I said, he's got to change some things up there. Um, New England, like you said, they're, they're not going to you know try to stop. Them. They're not going to be stopped. Indianapolis, Houston, Tennessee, it's really excuse me, the first one who who – Takes the ball there, uh, hypothetically speaking, and runs with it. They'll be they'll be fine. In Kansas City, I don't see anybody in the West taking them down. Dallas and Green Bay have looked great. Um, I think until uh, Mitchell Trubisky starts to look halfway decent in Chicago, will they be a factor? Even though they have a very good defense, they may end up being a, a wild card team if Trubisky can't put it together. Um, Tampa, Atlanta, New Orleans, again, first team to grab that and run with it. They'll be fine. And really in the West, it's the first team who blinks. I think it's going to be, um, they'll, they'll have a team in the West, obviously winning the West and they'll have a, a team that takes a wild card. There's no way that two teams do not come out of that, uh, come out of that division. So uh, absolutely not. We'll, and, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens I, there. I, uh, all I got to say is I just hope New England doesn't make the Super Bowl. I know we're talking about standings, but we don't want New England to make the Super Bowl. I mean, they probably will at this point. They have a, aside from Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, they have a very easy path to the Super Bowl. I would have to think they do, and I, uh, we all know what that means in uh, Buffalo Bills world for the Bills Mafia that they can no longer claim they're the only team to make four straight. Yeah, that'd be so. wild, wouldn't it? Looking at week three, some top matchups before we wrap up the podcast. Chris, you've got Baltimore versus Kansas City, Houston versus the Chargers, the uh, the Saints versus the Seahawks, and you have the Rams versus the Browns. So uh, there are a few good matchups this week, um, potential potential swing games 
that uh, will be very important down the road when we start to get those playoff matchups together. And it's definitely looking like um, we, we can have some good football this week. Absolutely. I mean, there's always, I think there's enough parity in the league with the, the few exceptions that you're always going to have at least one good matchup. Um, we're never going to have the college football uh, style where it's the top 25 beat down of, you know, state college out of, you know, podunk USA, <laughs> you know, exactly. Um, and, and I do like you that you put Cleveland on there. How many, how when was the last time Cleveland has been on a, a top matchup for anybody's radar? Sure. They're hosting the LA Rams, but I mean, they're at home under the lights again and, you know, they have the weapons. And I think, I think once that train gets rolling, that's going to be a, a beast to stop as well. For, if uh, that if that train doesn't get rolling, I think there's it, it might be a season where they look back and say, "Man, what if?" You know, they they definitely have the chance with with. I mean, Baltimore's playing out of their mind. We don't really know. I, I always want to see a team like a, a good t- show me a good team. Great, that's awesome. Like Baltimore's been great, but let me see them up against some adversity. Not facing Miami, not facing the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, they're they're going to be taking on Kansas City this week. That's definitely going to be a very good opportunity to see what that team is made of. But how how do they react to adversity? That's that's when you get a good idea of of what a, what a team actually is. Um, we've seen Cleveland have some adversity already. They're, they're, they they kind of rolled back against the, uh, the 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 Jets very well. But we'll have to see how they they face off against the Rams. And I'm I'm very intrigued by that game, especially because it's on Sunday Night Football. So uh, prime time, like you said, Chris. A lot of fun to watch, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens here. Yeah, with the exception of their annual Thursday night showdown with Buffalo, when was the last time Cleveland was uh, under the lights on a Sunday night or a Monday night game? I honestly can't remember. To be it's to be a, frank, I, I can't. It's, it's been a minute been for a sure. While. But Chris, I want to thank you, man, for joining the podcast today. I know it was kind of a last minute thing, but absolutely excuse me, I appreciate you making time. Always, always for the show. I am, uh, I know I'm kind of, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm watching this, uh, I'm watching NXT and this guy just won a match in 15 seconds, I think. Was he going yeah. against Santino Morella? I, I, he might have, he might have been. But hey, back to the podcast. I am Ryan Wolf at Wolf BLTD. Chris is at CJ Downey on Twitter. He of NC State. Uh, follow Chris. He's got some good stuff on not only on Twitter, but on Instagram as well. And as always, Chris, you know this just as well as everybody does. We are better live than dead. You are not. We will catch you sometime very soon. Thanks again for tuning in. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Do you like sports, interactive polls? friendly banter from two guys that probably shouldn't even be on the microphone doing this stuff anyways well if you do then you're in luck us two knuckleheads brandon and myself comprise the listen in podcast that's right listen in the podcast we're talking sports we're talking news we're talking topical things we're talking all sorts of things my babies and you are all invited to listen in right here on the gear radio network